She will set your fields on fire. She will burn your valleys clear. Oh, make me a little sparrow. There's no hiding place down here. I'm Lucia Comnes. I was born in San Francisco, California. I play folk music on the fiddle, on the guitar. I sing, I write songs, music for the people, you know. Music has always been a part of my life, uh, ever since I can remember. I started playing the violin as a child. Empower, inspire, liberate. I hope my music is part of the solution. I hope it's a light in this world. I just saw a concert uh, by James Maddock and one of his CDs is called Wake Up and Dream. So I hope my music helps wake you up and makes you dream. Uh, Madonna had a movement for a while called Art for Freedom and I, I was really into that. Um, and I guess a little bit of a rebel heart, right? Living from the heart but not afraid to take risks and take chances and to find your own path. And so. Those are things that I strive for and I hope my music brings into other people's lives. My mother has the fever. Well, you got music in your heart, in your soul, you gotta get it out there. So you do it any way you can. Um, there's not really a formula uh, in music. You just try different things, take risks, and hope that um, doors open. So I had the great fortune to play with Joan Baez a couple years ago on a, a tour in California that she did with a French singer-songwriter, um, Mar Marianne Aya Omak. And I can't really express in words that experience of being on stage behind Joan Baez, um, playing violin behind her songs and seeing her audience and feeling that um, exchange between her audience and, and her and her music. Um, how did it happen? I, I was in the right place at the right time. I play music with her son, who's a f fantastic percussionist and drummer, and uh, they needed a violinist for this tour, and I was available. So I was able to have that wonderful experience. <laughs> from Ireland, Liam O'Mwainley of the Hot House Flowers from Ireland, um, Teada is a group I'm about to play with, also from Ireland. Um, years ago, when I was a singer with Kitka, the vocal ensemble, I had the chance to sing with Linda Tillery and the Cultural Heritage Choir from Oakland. And in my recent album, the Tea Sisters sing harmonies, that was a very fun collaboration. And also, um, I was able to collaborate with a few artists from Mali, West Africa, including Kadamo Suso and Cora and um, Via Farcature, the son of Ali Farcature, um, incredible guitarist, uh, just to name a few. Let's see, I've played for audiences as small as one. I play for my husband at home all the time. <laughs> Um, or in the studio when you really don't have an audience at all. Uh, and the largest audience must have been at the Oakland Coliseum for the football game Raiders versus the Steelers. I played America the Beautiful on the violin to open um, the game. I think there were about 60,000 people in the audience. Uh, completely different experience. Probably more like playing in the studio actually because you're, you've got the inner ear monitors and you see all these people, but you don't see their faces. Um, I probably prefer playing for a smaller audience, uh, something more intimate. I love doing house concerts, completely acoustic. It's great to not even have to worry about doing a sound check. Um, but then I love, you know, small venues or a good sized venue like Great American Music Hall uh, with my band and putting on a, a great show where. The venue is just set up for that, setting it, set up for a group. We just show up and put on a great show. Um, that's, that's always really fun as well. Well, I've been writing all my 
life since I can remember um, alongside the music. I, for example, was writing journals as a child as well. However, I didn't put the music and the words together until about five years ago um, where, you know, I really made that a goal uh, to finish songs because, I mean, we have ideas all the time. Uh, but to start a song and finish it is a good piece of work. Um, it's not exactly easy, the songwriting process, but sometimes the songs just come on their own and it's effortless. Most of the time it's like showing up for work, rolling up your sleeves, putting the hours in, um, and if you're lucky or if you stick with it long enough, you'll, your song will, will be, be born or be developed. Um, and when it is, when you find that great uh, alchemy of, of music and lyrics, it's incredibly satisfying. So that's what keeps me, keeps me in it. There must be a reason that it hurts so bad. I recorded Love, Hope and Tyranny, my recent album, because I had written all these songs and um, those songs that really stood out, uh, and they, re they needed a home. So an album kind of gives your body of work a home. And when I looked at all the songs together and uh, I looked at the themes of the stories behind the songs, they were primarily themes of love, hope, and tyranny, in particular um, try, trying to find hope or, or ways of finding hope in a world of tyranny. Um, and so that's how the album title was born. And, um, and I made the album because I love the recording process. I think it's very exhilarating for most musicians, artists, songwriters to have the chance to put a body of work together and present it as a whole. Um, it's very difficult and it's a long process, but it is, it's just wonderful. Will you miss me when I'm gone, when the days are growing long? The song on the album that I have the most fun with is the last track, Will You Miss Me When I'm Gone, which I wrote based on stories of women, outlaw women in the 1850s, mid-1800s in the United States in the Wild West, so that's a lot of fun to perform. The song that I'm most proud of, however, and probably is my favorite, is No Hiding Place, which is the number one track. And um, it won the best song in 2014 in the Dallas Songwriters Contest. And as a result of that, I'm going to Nashville uh, shortly and I'm gonna be recording a song in Nashville as part of the winnings of the contest. So that song has really opened doors for me. So I think it's my favorite. With the wings of the sparrow, there's no hiding place down here. Oh, there's so many. Um, but I think the artists that are at the top of my playlist these days are Ray LaMontagne, First Aid Kit, Emmylou Harris, uh, Buddy Miller, Gillian Welsh, um, Patty Griffin, Bonnie Raitt, uh, Paul Brady. I listen to um, a lot of soul. I love Ray Charles. Um, Bruce Springsteen's Ghost of Tom Joad. Oh gosh, so many more. Um, West African music like Via Farcatore and oh, the, the classics, right? Bob Dylan, Leonard Cohen. Um, there are so, so, so many. Those are a few. Let me spread my wings, they will carry so me. what's next? Well, um, Nashville. I've got concerts coming up in California this uh, March and the end of February and concerts in Italy um, later on in the spring and in the summer. I would love for my music to be placed in a major film or at least a good film, <laughs> so that's a big dream. And just writing, I'm writing more songs and I want to get those songs out into the world. I wanna collaborate with more artists. I want to write with other people. I want other people to sing my songs. Um, I want to be able to be viable as an artist so just I can continue developing and growing uh, as, as an artist and as, as a person. This is a new song I'm writing. Um, it's in 
progress. It's called You Can't Stop the Music. Say the road to justice is a ragged mountain path. Once you cross the heartland. 